It's perfect. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay. So let's start the lecture. Uh, I guess this is in the afternoon now. So again, I will uh, welcome uh, all of you guys uh, back to the lectures. And uh, it's my honor, my pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Professor Paul Cravine. And uh, at certain times, I like to tell, tell stories in, in introducing rather than very dry kind of introduction. But uh, and as, as I was thinking, there are two things I want to mention, okay? Uh, well, first of all, Professor Clavine is a legend in income much. We are also fortunate to have him to give us the lecture. Uh, a story I want to tell is a long time ago, uh, Paul, if you remember, you went to Northwestern University to give a seminar. That's and right. I was a faculty member there. Yeah. And I went to listen to the seminar. That is a legendary seminar. <laughs> and uh, he presented uh, his work on frame front, generalized work on frame front instability. It is so mind boggling. Okay, those times, those are in the late, what is it, in the early 80s or late 70s? Anyway, around that time. The early 80s. Early 80s. And that's the, it's a blossoming of combustion combustion in general, combustion theory in particular. So here's generalized theory of frame front instabilities, that one. And it, it was so exciting. And, and, and I was there and I was listening and all that. And that work, of course, later published uh, together with uh, Professor Williams. Yeah. Uh, he himself also, but also with Williams. And just then, just out of curiosity, I double check for this paper, Clavine and Williams, is the most highly cited paper of Foreman, <laughs> William. <laughs> Foreman Williams most high, you can tell him that. His most that. highly cited paper is the one with you, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. He, I don't know whether he knows, I, I just checked. So so that's that's one thing, it's, I mean, you guys, you know, as I said, you, you guys are listening to, to a legend, it's really legend. The other thing is just, uh, I don't know whether you guys real, again, it's a long time ago, those times, uh, we talk about the four horsemen of combustion. Four horsemen, horse, horsemen. The four horsemen. You don't even know the four. You know, in the I don't know history or, or biblical thing. The four horsemen, the the, the, the knights, the, the ah, four ah, major yes, people. yes, four. yes. The four. You guys know who are the four horsemen? The four horsemen is Foreman Williams, <laughs> and Marbury and Inyon, Marble <laughs> Peters, and Paul Clavine. That's really, I okay. correct. Yeah, the four horsemen. They are they are the legends, yeah. the le the 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 powerful, the most powerful theoreticians. Okay, right. so uh, so so you are looking at you are looking at the legend. All right, mm -hmm. so just be just feel very 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 fortunate. And I myself have been benefited so much by uh, interacting with uh, Professor Clavine, learning from him, and just you know pick his brain and and all that. Read his papers. He's worked on many, many things, many things, and uh, he sort of knows everything. And uh, so, so anyway, uh, I, I've spoken enough. Uh, maybe I just leave, uh, leave the podium to him. Now, uh, Paul, you are in control of the, the whole. Okay. Okay. You Thank you, Ed, very much. Thank you yeah. very much for okay. this nice introduction. <laughs> okay. Yes. I yeah, appreciate tell, it. Tell, tell, I tell appreciate Foreman, it. tell Foreman the paper is. I will tell it. I will tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So yeah. let me start. Uh, so uh, as uh, as Ed say, uh, Professor Lo say, I am Paul Clavin, and I am in charge in the summer school of uh, uh, theoretical analysis uh, concerning uh, combustion waves uh, in premixed gases. So I will not look to uh, non-premixed uh, uh, combustion, only I focus my attention on premixed uh, combustion and more especially on flames, the dynamics of flame forms and the dynamics of detonation. And uh, uh, Professor Lowe will be happy to know that uh, in this lecture this year, I, I, I just got some new results on for the DDT, on the transition from deflagration to detonation. And I will present these results that are going to appear in combustion and flame uh, in next uh, issue uh, 
in this lecture. So this is a brand new result I am happy to, to, to present in this, uh, in this school. Okay, uh, I am professor at the Aix-Marseille University and Aix-Marseille University is, is, is a university uh, on, on, in two uh, uh, city, one Aix-en-Provence, a very old, uh, and Marseille, Marseille, very old uh, uh, Greek city, five year, five, five century before Christ, and Aix-en-Provence is a Roman uh, city, uh, 100 uh, year before Christ. Uh, I, my lecture concerns a lot, uh, many, many different topics, and it will be difficult uh, it will not be possible in 15 lectures to enter into all the details of the calculation. So I have a select, I made a selection of uh, the, the different uh, topics that I am going uh, to discuss. Uh, Complements and uh, the references to, to the original paper will be found in details in my uh, uh, 2016 book uh, with uh, Jeff Sirby uh, in Cambridge. And the most recent, uh, and for the most recent work, because this book is, was published now uh, around five years ago, uh, I will give you the detail, the, uh, the explicit references. Uh, uh, I, let me start by very simple uh, consideration uh, or simple background, essentially concerning orders of magnitude. And let me begin by the overall, overall combustion chemistry. Uh, combustion uh, was, uh, uh, let's say, understood really by Lavoisier at the end of the 18th century, like uh, 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 the uh, 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 chemical reaction between reactants, an oxidant and a fuel, produ uh, 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 producing products plus its release. Uh, according to the binding energy of uh, molecule, uh, it turns out that the increase of temperature uh, from the fresh mixture and uh, to the burned gas is typically about uh, 2000 Kel uh, Kelvin and for the, uh, uh, but the reaction time is a highly sensitive function of the temperature such that for temperature below 500, typically below 500K, the mixture is almost completely frozen uh, at out for, in, in a composition fully out of chemical equilibrium. However, as the temperature uh, is about uh, 2000, 2500, the reaction time, the characteristic time of reaction becomes as short as one uh, uh, nano, uh, uh, microsecond. So this high sensitivity of the reaction rate uh, to and coupled with the heat release lead to a thermal feedback that when you when the heat is released the temperature increase and the reaction rate increase also so this uh, uh, leads to a thermal feedback and this explains why the combustion usually proceeds the combustion of a premixed gas usually proceeds through the through the propagation of wave and the first uh, uh, and let's say that the first man who understands that was this, the famous mathematician Euler in the beginning of 18th century. And the first experiments were by the Davy in the 19th century. Uh, <clears throat> let me now uh, be more precise. Let me now go to, to um, some elementary cons consideration uh, concerning combustion wave in premixed gaseous mixture. Uh, there are, you know, depending on the way of transferring the energy from the hot mixture to the cold mixture, there are typically two types of combustion wave. One 
called laminar propagation is it is usually called a flame flames uh, it, uh, involve propagation velocity about few 10 centimeters to the faster uh, 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 flames are for very energetic measure cannot be above 10 meters per second and the pressure jump is quite negligible. So this is a, clearly a subsonic wave propagation. Uh, there is, uh, it was discovered uh, at the end of, no, in the, in the last quarter of the uh, uh, 19th century, that there is another uh, uh, possibility of wave much faster and much more dangerous because the, because the increase of temperature, the relative increase is uh, in, in gases mixture is close to 30. So it is very dangerous. And these are called detonation. And the people uh, who first mentioned that, uh, in fact, they were discovered this detonation in solid, in solid propellant in, uh, by, by, an engineering, by an engineer working for the Nobel company. Uh, uh, but, but I am limiting my talk to gaseous mixture. And the first people who tried to uh, describes this at the end of the 19th century. One is what not know is a chemist, is Paul Vielle, is a French chemist, and there is also Berthelot, another chemist. In fact, this wave detonation were discovered by chemists. In between, more recently, uh, thanks to John Lee, essentially, uh, it was identified fast deflagration, typically uh, with a, velo a propagation velocity of 100 meter per second, and uh, still a very uh, small pressure jump, but markedly larger than in flame. And this propagation usually is observed in turbulent uh, flow. <clears throat> Let me now go back to uh, elementary consideration, physical consideration, and back to the what is called the kinetic theory of gases. Uh, uh, all the process in the gas, uh, transport process essentially, are uh, associated by binary collisions between uh, molecules. And uh, 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 this binary collision in molecule are characterized by a distance between two collisions called the mean free path, a velocity of uh, each particle on average, which is the thermal, the thermal agitation, which is uh, close to the speed of sound. That, uh, this is a mean propagation velocity. And so that the characteristic time between two collisions is uh, 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 L. Uh, let me, if I can, do I have my pointer? Ah, my pointer. Okay. No, okay, too bad. Uh, no, uh, something wrong up here, but it will, I will, I will, I will. Okay, so this, if I do that. Okay. Uh, uh, do you see my screen? Uh, professor, uh, the previous setting was the right one. This is not. Well, uh, excuse me. Do you see my, my pointer here? Um, no? No. Okay. I will be back to the other. Here, the problem is that I have no pointer in this one. Uh, so uh, is it okay now? Um, there is no pointer still. No, there is no pointer. I cannot put the pointer here. I can put, um, tell me, just tell me, if I change uh, here, uh, you do not see uh, my screen? We do see the screen, but I cannot see any pointer. And now no, we see, we see two pictures. The yeah. same picture, one big, one small. Ah. Okay, this is not this one. Okay, okay, I understand. So you are, you are on my. Okay, I, I will, I will skip. I will be back to the other. Now you have only one. Okay. Yes. And but there is no pointer. That's the problem. Okay. Too bad. Too bad. 
So uh, I will work without pointer. I will change. I will uh, arrange that in the next lecture. So mm -hmm. you, you have the mean time between two collision, which is uh, uh, the ratio of the, the mean free pass divided by the propagation velocity. And, and this is typically uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, I, I will tell you, it is a, uh, in, at ordinary condition, it is close to a nanosecond. Uh, <clears throat> there is an important result of uh, the kinetic theory of gas, uh, which is uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution that I have recalled here. I will not use it in detail, but just uh, keep in mind uh, the, uh, uh, the exponential uh, uh, v square and v square divided by kvt. And, <clears throat> and that what we have to, re to keep also in mind that the molecular diffusion is indeed a random work process and, it, and introducing a diffusion coefficient, what is called molecular diffusion coefficient, which has the dimension of the length square divided by the time, which is simply of order of magnitude of the mean free pass L times the velocity of the particle, uh, which can be written also the L squared divided by tau collision, or also uh, the sound speed square multiplied by the characteristic time between two collision, two collision. And this diffusion coefficient uh, <coughs> uh, control completely the diffusion process. For example, if you take, if you take a spot of black molecules in white molecules, the difference between molecules being only in the color, they are all the same, except for the color. Think about a drop of coffee in a cup of tea, uh, but in gas, this is in liquid. So now this, this uh, spot, initial spot is going to spread by diffusion in such a way that the radius of the spot is proportional to the square root of uh, diffusion coefficient time, time uh, multiplied by the time. This is why the exponential that you have in the spreading uh, uh, in, the, in this Gaussian distribution here uh, is R square divided by 4 dt. And this, keep in mind that the diffusion coefficient, uh, which is, which control in fact, the transport processes, the molecular transport processes in gas, is can be expressed in terms of the mean free of the mean free pass and of the uh, uh, collision frequency. Uh, <clears throat> now, now with simple dimensional analysis, now we can have we can obtain uh, interesting result. You know, what are the dimensional parameters? The first dimensional parameter that you have is a chemical energy that can liberate by the, by the reaction per unit mass uh, Qn. And this chemical energy is such uh, that the increase of temperature, the ratio of the increase of temperature gives give rise, uh, give to ratio of the order of between five and 10. You have another, uh, a dimensional parameter, natural one, which is the sound speed. And the sound speed is uh, varying with temperature, but not so much, uh, like the square root of the temperature. And we may, in the first, uh, uh, let's say, the first consideration to consider that it is uh, constant. And now you have the reaction rate, which is in fact the characteristic reaction time at the temperature, uh, maximum temperature. And you have the molecular uh, coefficient diffusion. And uh, you know, D is molecular and DT is for the thermal coefficient diffusion, which is uh, in gas, they are all of the same order and practically equal. So recalling that uh, 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 heat release uh, uh, per unit uh, uh, mass is a velocity square, it's clear that you can uh, 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 first construct a velocity uh, 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 by the square root of, of the heat release QM. 
And this gives you uh, typically the sound speed in the burn gas. So it's a fast uh, uh, propagation, what close to 1000 meters per second. It, it is clearly supersonic considering the uh, uh, sound speed in the fresh mixture. And this is not so far from a detonation, from the velocity field. On the other side, uh, with a diffusion coefficient, was uh, dimension is a velocity square multiplied by the time. And, 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 and you can build a, ve a velocity by the square root of the uh, diffusion coefficient divided by the reaction time. And this is uh, clearly, as you, as you will see now in the next, next slide, uh, clearly subsonic. <clears throat> The, the, uh, the uh, heat release in, uh, in a reaction in the uh, gaseous mixture is controlled by inelastic collisions between molecules of reactants. <clears throat> uh, the co-molecules of reactants are less stable than the products. Products uh, typically is CO2 and H2O, that is uh, dioxide, carbon dioxide, dioxide and, or, and water. These molecules are much of products are more stable than the reactants fuel and oxygen. And, and the difference of, uh, 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 of the chemical bonds in the product and in the reactants is a heat release because the products are more stable uh, 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 than the reactants. There is a difference of uh, uh, the products, uh, the, the uh, chemical bonds of the products uh, are more stronger than in the reactants. So the, there is a difference in energy. But however, for a collision to go from the reactant to the product, uh, the molecule have first to be broken, uh, uh, the, the chemical bond uh, linking the reactants should be broken in such a way that the radicals that are liberate can be uh, recombined in product. So in a sense, because before to obtain a, a product, you should break the, the, the chemical bonds of the reactant should be broken, uh, uh, open, should be open. And this costs energy. And this energy is the, what is called the activation energy E, uh, which is larger than the difference of uh, uh, energy between the chemical bonds between reactant and product, which means that it is larger than the heat release in such a way that the typical order of magnitude of the energy divided by the thermal uh, energy, uh, KBT, KB is a cons Boltzmann constant, TB is the temperature of the burn in the burn gas is typically eight. Now, using the Boltzmann, uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution uh, that I have just recalled uh, previously, if you count now the number of, of collisions uh, for which the, diff the, the uh, kinetic energy of the two reactants that are going to collide, the so two molecules, is larger than the, act of, uh, than the activation energy, as it should be to go to the products, because of the, acti of the exponent factor of the Maxwell distribution, you obtain what is well known uh, uh, as an Arrhenius factor that says that the reaction rate at temperature T is equal to the elastic collision rate multiplied by an, an Arrhenius factor, which is the exponential of minus, minus the activation energy divided by the thermal energy. And, uh, uh, and uh, in in, in, in uh, elastic collision rate in at ordinary temperature is, uh, let's say, that the collision time is typically one nanosecond, so that uh, the, uh, the, the collision rate 
is typically 10 to the 9 second minus 1. Now, <clears throat> if, for example, as in the ordinary case, the reaction uh, uh, time uh, uh, at high temperature is 10 minus 5 seconds, so that now when you use uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this reference time to a, uh, uh, for the reaction rate at the burn gas temperature, if you want to compute the reaction rate uh, given by the Arrhenius laws, because of the large uh, Arrhenius factor that you had in, uh, in this Arrhenius lab, you will find that the uh, characteristic time of the reaction uh, is typically larger than the age of the universe, which means that there is no reaction at all at small temperature. This is a simple and half explanation of uh, the Arrhenius law. And this Arrhenius law is, cannot be taken too seriously uh, for the real chemi chemical reactions uh, in combustion, but it gives, you, it gives you a very good order of magnitude of, uh, of the reaction rate. Now, uh, uh, because as soon as you know uh, the Arrhenius law, uh, using the kinetic theory of gas that I have just recalled in the previous slide, computing uh, the, re the square root of the de thermal diffusivity divided by the reaction uh, time, which is given by the Arrhenius factor, you obtain, and using uh, the, the sound speed, which is uh, the mean free pass divided by the uh, uh, collision, the time, the characteristic time between collision, you obtain that the ratio of, the, of the, this uh, uh, velocity square root of dt divided by 2r divided by uh, sound speed is square root of the Arrhenius factor, which is a, sm a very small number. So you see immediately that because of the of simple kinetic theory or simple consideration with kinetic theory of gas, you obtain that a, fr uh, that a, fr a combustion front propagating uh, uh, through the diffusivity of heat should be strongly subsonic. More, more than that, it's easy to compute now the, that, the thickness of the flame, and which is simply the, deton the uh, diffusion coefficient divided by this velocity, and you obtain that <laughs> it is exactly that the ratio of the flame thickness divided by the mean free pass is just the inverse of the ratio of the laminar flame, flame to the uh, uh, sound speed. So it's a very large number. And this is a very important result because it tells you immediately that you can analyze the flame structure by using the macroscopic equation uh, uh, and you do not need to go through the Boltzmann equation with the kinetic uh, uh, to study the flame structure. Uh, as, as you maybe know, this is not true for shock waves. I, I will explain that uh, when I will uh, be considering shock waves. Uh, so now, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this is exactly uh, a summary of just uh, what I have just said. And, but this uh, dimensional analysis has limitation. For example, when you use a typical order of magnitude uh, of uh, uh, hydrocarbon, a flame of hydrocarbon air, you will find a, ve a velocity flame velocity, which is typically 10 times larger than that which is observed. And you will find a, 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 a detonation thickness, which is 10 times smaller. So you see, uh, the dimensional analysis uh, cannot tell you exactly uh, what uh, uh, the, the result, but it gives you a good rough idea of what it is. Now, let me uh, just a uh, 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 few words about a real hydrocarbon air flame. Uh, here is plot, I have plot, uh, you know, now 
it is a standard, uh, uh, there are good uh, uh, numerical codes to compute the, the flame speed and, and also to measure the flame speed, but this is not by <laughs> numerics, but experimental. So we know we have a very good uh, represent, uh, a very good knowledge of the laminar flame speed. For example, here I have plot uh, the result for meth methane air flame, and I have introduced a, a very useful quantity in a conversion of premix conversion, which is called the equivalence ratio, which is the ratio of the fuel, the number of fuel, divide, fuel molecule divided by the number of oxidizer or oxidant of O2. Molecule in a given uh, for a given uh, mass of mixture and divide by the ratio of the uh, corresponding equivalence uh, 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 stoichiometric coefficient uh, nu plus and, uh, and, and nu, nu plus f and nu plus o and in such a way that uh, the this equivalence ratio for a stoichiometric mixture when the fuel and the oxidant are in the exact proportion in such a way they both disappear in the product that after the combustion we do not have any longer any fuel and any oxidant. This is called a, 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 a stoichiometric uh, a mixture. The, in the, for stoichiometric mixture, this equivalence ratio is one. When the fuel is in excess, that means that uh, you find in the burned gases you 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 will find fuel, not only fuel, but decomposition of fuel and so on. You are, and no more oxygen, you are fuel rich. And this in the fuel rich, the equivalence ratio is larger than unity. While it is, while, well, it is smaller than unity when the comp when you deal with a fuel lean mixture, which, which means that you have an excess of oxidant in, in, in the mixture. Here I just uh, to to show to show that uh, the same the things the real flame are not so sim as simple as uh, described by the one step uh, chemical reaction governed by an Arrhenius law. I have plot here some results obtained by different group uh, for uh, 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 a flame near flammability limit. Alors, what is a flammability limit? It turns out, uh, for example, uh, in air, meth methane air flame, uh, for equivalence ratio smaller than 0.6 or larger than 1.6, there is no more flame. Flame exists only in this window. And, and what is interesting is that the limiting value of the flame at this window is not zero. It's typically eight centimeters per second in, in an hydrocarbon flame. So there is no flame below uh, eight centimeters per second. And I try to explain you that in future, in next uh, 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 lecture. <clears throat> but what is interesting is that uh, close to the flammability limit, the speed, the propagation speed is small, so that the thickness of the flame is large, and it is much more easy to uh, compute the different profiles, concentration profile of the different species uh, across the flame. Here you have uh, the, you see, this is a, a, a lean flame, so that the uh, 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 methane the methane is zero in the burned gas. So, uh, and you have an excess of oxygen in the burned gas. And you have all the, some, some of the intermediate species, CO, OH, radical OH, H2O. There is also the radical H, but it is very small also. And uh, which is, which can be obtained in this, uh, <coughs> by using, uh, uh, by solving the uh, uh, inner structure of the flame. Uh, now, let me finish this first lecture by uh, 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 some <coughs> uh, uh, that uh, some phenomena that we are going to explain. 
<coughs> to, to understand what is an instability, uh, instability of flame, uh, there is an analog in mechanics uh, of, uh, uh, of a ball in a well, wheel, wheel ring. The first uh, on the left, first left picture uh, where uh, the, 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 the rim is convex, uh, the flame, uh, no, the ball, the ball in, the, in this wheel is stable. The sta because if, you, if, you if there is a fluctuation in position of this uh, ball, it will be back uh, because of the friction on the rim to the stable state, which is the minimum uh, uh, altitude of the, of the ball. On, on the other, on the other uh, side, the, the next picture is uh, uh, what is, uh, where the ball is on the top of, a, uh, or let's say, concave or convex. I, I'm, <laughs> I am not sure. Of that. You know, it's clear that in that case, if you slightly uh, if you have a slight fluctuation of the position, the, the, the ball is going to fall immediately and to leave its, uh, steady, its initial state. And this is called a linearly unstable uh, uh, case. There are an intermediate, a very interesting intermediate case where the, the ball is stable uh, uh, against small fluctuation, as soon as the fluctuation is sufficiently to cross the bump on the right, uh, you uh, you become unstable. This is called non-linearly unstable situation. It turns out that planar frames are linearly unstable because of hydrodynamic phenomena that I am going to explain in uh, tomorrow lecture, I guess. Uh, <coughs> uh, and this, this, na this natural instability uh, has been discovered by uh, Darius and Landor in the middle of the, 19th, of the 20th century. And uh, it is due to the fact that there is a difference of density between the burn, the unburned, the fresh mixture, you, 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 uh, you, uh, which is larger than the burn gas density. Uh, and this is going to produce and to induce flow as soon as the front is wrinkling, and this induced flow is going to amplify the initial wrinkle. Uh, this is uh, observed in propane lean flame in this photograph, uh, and this leads to cusp formation when you follow the Jugend's construction. I, I, I will be back to this topic. Uh, there, there is another diffusion and stability, which has nothing to do with this hydrodynamic instability. This, the, the other, this other instability of frame is, uh, um, the, is due to the difference of diffusivity between, between heat and uh, uh, molecular diffusion of the limiting species. And this is going to, to give a quite different uh, uh, frame shape as you see, uh, on, the, on the bottom, you have a propane rich frame, typically, which is yellow with small, which uh, a very uh, 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 cellular structure, while in the propane lean flame, uh, you have a blue and the flame is, the cells are much more large, large larger. There is, Another type of instability that I am going to describe in my lecture is the system instability that, is, that occurs when the combustion develops in a cavity and which results from the coupling of the flame, of the heat releasing flame with the acoustic mode of the cavity. This was discovered, uh, not discovered. Uh, the discovery of this phenomena is very old. It's, uh, it's report, uh, uh, in Bunsen burner very early uh, uh, at the beginning of the 19th century. But the first explanation was given by the famous scientist Lord Rayleigh. And this is a typical instability that developed in combustion chambers, in rocket engine, and in gas turbine. And it is a very, very 
uh, uh, important topic uh, from for the Atari point of view. But it it is now well known, well understood, but uh, not so easy uh, to get rid of. I, I, I will try to explain you that later on for, for clear reason for that. Uh, let me give you now a, a simple, uh, 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 show you a, a, a simple uh, experiment of flame, which was developed uh, uh, at the beginning of this century by Jeff Sirby, my, my co-author of the book in Marseille, using a tomography uh, cut uh, laser used by, uh, developed by Louis Boyer to visualize the flame front without modifying the flame structure. Uh, uh, it, it, the experiment is a, is a flame uh, propagating downwards in a tube. That is a simple experiment. And I will show you uh, a, a, a lean, the result for lean methane air flame with uh, uh, two different equivalence ratio, but not far from uh, you know, each other. And, but the difference is that in the laminar flame speed, one is uh, uh, 23 centimeter per second, the first one you will see, and the second one is simply 30 centimeter per second. Let's go to see the, 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 the ah, do, do, do you see, okay? Okay, this is for the first one. It's very slow, uh, uh, very nice flame propagating, and it is not noisy. Look to the second one. You, you, you see, I don't know if you hear the, the sound of that. Uh, 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 it, it's much, much stronger. And uh, because of the, with the tomography cut uh, by the technique of uh, Louis Boyer, uh, one can see what happened to the flame. You see, the average position of the flame is oscillating. Why? It is because uh, the flame has excited the acoustic mode of the tube. And in the secondary instability, because of this oscillation appear, that is going to develop a very strong instability that is going to destroy completely the flame structure. You see? Completely. And this is the noise that you have. You have uh, it turns out that these experiments now are, uh, are developed and, and much more uh, uh, study, uh, but essentially by Japanese group, by uh, Osamu Fujita. Uh, and I, I, but I, I did not put that here, but I, I see that there is also a recent experiment in, in the last year, last year of the same thing. So this, this is a simple, uh, <clears throat> uh, experiment, laboratory experiment, that is very useful to understand the flame and stability. Now, let me go to uh, spectacular uh, uh, effect of the acceleration of flame. For example, when a flame propagating propagates upward in a tube, uh, 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 this is, is uh, lean uh, uh, methane flame. The, uh, you know, the flame takes the shape of a, a, a ball uh, uh, propagating upwards because uh, the gravity is downward. Now, if you now, this is a flame propagating upward. Take the same flame and uh, looking for propagating downward, but not uh, in the region where we have found this uh, instability with the coupling of the fund. And it is possible by just uh, tuning uh, uh, very, very finely uh, uh, the composition. And essentially also not only the equivalence ratio, but also the dilution. So you need a very slow downward propagating flame. In that case, the same flame will take a planar shape, completely planar. And just uh, there, you can obtain uh, <coughs> the instability threshold very, very finely, and you may see the uh, onset of typical hexagonal structure, very nice, very, very uh, quasi, quasi steady structure. And then if you increase uh, 
the velocity, this become very turbulent, a very turbulent flame as the one I have shown in the previous lecture. Now, another very spectacular effect is uh, if you look, if you have a, a Bunsen flame, you see, anchored to a tube, this is a met met methane rich Bunsen flame, and you can see it is rich because you see uh, the cone is a premixed flame, and the side you have a diffusion flame because in the burn gas of uh, uh, behind uh, the premix frame, uh, there is methane left because you are rich, and that is burning by diffusion frame on the side. But this is not important. What is important is just uh, focus the attention on the conic chain of the premix frame. Now, just you excite with a good frequency, that, that's a key point, yeah, you have to adjust the frequency of the acoustic in the tube. And if you do that, you can change drastically uh, the shape of the frame and in the presence of axial acoustic field and uh, uh, showing uh, that uh, the, and, and we will find that uh, uh, the, and this is not well explained for the moment, that the shape of the frame looks to follow the equipotential surface of the acoustic uh, uh, in the absence of flame. But this is not well, it's not still well explained, but it's, it's an interesting result. Okay, this is uh, just the end of my first lecture. Uh, I, I will skip to the second lecture now because it's, uh, we have uh, still, uh, we have uh, more than eight minutes left uh, between my first uh, <clears throat> break. So let's be back and let me go to the, uh, okay, to the second lecture, where it is. Okay. No, this is the third lecture. Where is the second one? Ah, I lost it. Okay, I will find it. Ah. Ah. All right. Okay, so. My second lecture, wait a minute, uh, yes, is now. The, the second lecture is uh, 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 concerned the governing equations. So, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> In the gaseous mixture in normal conditions, it can be considered as a continuous medium in local equilibrium. And uh, this, this is because the mean free pass of between two collisions is much smaller than every length character, characterizing uh, the gradients of macroscopic quantity like temperature, density, and so on. So uh, each point uh, of this uh, continuum medium is in fact a microscopic uh, uh, system and is called a fluid particle. And this fluid particle is assumed to be in local equilibrium because the characteristic time of the evolution of the macroscopic uh, 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 system is, is much longer than the characteristic time to, to, to reach the, chemi the, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, and this time is a collision time. So, this is what I have written here that the relaxation time toward equilibrium is uh, elastic uh, collision time is much smaller than the macroscopic time. Uh, I just put here a warning that this is not working inside. 
uh, this, uh, for the internal structure of show wave, this is not right for this case. Uh, <clears throat> let's uh, start with the conserved extensive quantity. The, uh, what is a an extensive quantity? Is a quantity that is obtained uh, by uh, uh, an average of a volume of a density, sm small a, depending on space r and time, and times the mass density. So, so the product rho a is the density of the quantity a per unit volume and multiply by the elementary volume and integrate on the volume, you have a, an extensive quantity. This is the definition of an extensive quantity. An extensive quantity is a quantity that increases like the volume or like the mass of when it is homogeneous uh, 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 of the considered uh, volume. Uh, <coughs> there are two ways to change uh, uh, the, the, the quantity A, uh, capital A, uh, which for a, a fixed volume. So this is the integral of the time derivative of the derivative with respect to time of the integral of the inter of, of, of whole A time derivative. And here there are two ways to make this quantity change. The first thing is through the flux of A quantity A through the boundary. This is what I denote dA over dt1. is an integral over the surface delimiting the volume, which is assumed to be fixed, uh, uh, by the flux uh, in the normal direction. When uh, this is simply uh, 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 the, the modification of a quantity because uh, a mass, uh, the mass which enters is different than the mass which, des, uh, which gets out. It turns out that because of uh, uh, the uh, Ostrogers uh, 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 well-known theorem in mathematics, such a flux integrate over a surface can be transformed in a volumetric uh, 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 integral on the divergence of the flux. In fact, this can be understood as uh, the definition of the divergence, by the way. Uh, the second way that such a quantity can vary is because of the change inside, uh, uh, volumetric change. For example, we can, uh, you, 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 can think about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, 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 for example, uh, if it is released, the energy can be uh, 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 changed by the heat which is released inside, release, excuse me, inside by the chemical reaction. And this uh, is a volumetric uh, uh, integral of uh, what is called a production rate dot omega omega a rt and uh, putting together uh, these two things and uh, because this is going to work for any uh, volume uh, you have the conservation the conservative form the no the conservation equation of the quantity a in local form in the in the form of the partial derivative of rho a, uh, uh, me, der re derivative of rho a uh, uh, relative to the temperature is equal to the minus, to minus the divergence of the flux plus the production rate. This is a general form uh, for the, for the uh, conservation, uh, the local form of conservation of any quantity. Uh, extensive quantity. Uh, uh, what is called a conserved scalar is a quantity for which the production, production term is zero. So that the uh, equation for the conserved quantity is simply 
the uh, time derivative, the derivative with respect to time is equal to the divergence of the flux. Uh, uh, for conserve uh, now, if if instead of a scalar you have a vector, uh, the difference is that the flux is no longer a vector, but it is now a tensor. This is only different. So uh, it's time to have now 10 minute breaks and uh, uh, to start, uh, I start my second lecture in 10 minutes. Thank you very much for your attention. So 10 minute breaks. Let me try to fix this. Are you stuck? All right. Oh, let's so let's uh, continue the, the lecture of the conserved uh, conservation. Uh, uh, let's go to the conservation of mass. Uh, <clears throat> where is my pointer? Ah, no, no. Excuse me. This is an error. All right. The pointer is here. Okay. Uh, now, the mass, uh, the conservation of mass, uh, uh, mass is a conserved scalar, so there is no production uh, term in the mass conservation equation. Rho is the density. Uh, the mass, the flux is just the mass flux is rho times the velocity, uh, the flow velocity. And in fact, this could be understood as a definition of the flow velocity. <laughs> and uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, this uh, takes this form here, divergence of rho u minus. And if you use a uh, 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 conservative, you can use a conservative form of uh, uh, this equation by uh, introducing the uh, material derivative, which is also called the Lagrangian derivative, which is a derivative following a fluid particle. Uh, if, you, if you introduce uh, uh, this uh, operator here, uh, the uh, mass conservation, uh, the Euler form is transformed in the Lagrangian form, which is written here, and uh, uh, which is more clear, the physical explain the physical interpretation is more here, here. The divergence of the flow velocity is just the relative increase of the specific volume, which is inverse of the density, uh, uh, when following uh, the particles, the fluid particles. So, uh, in general, the Lagrangian one can define a Lagrangian Lagrangian form of uh, conservation. Uh, uh, excuse me, where is my pointer? Here, yeah. uh, uh, Lagrangian form of conservation equation uh, by introducing the flux uh, by decomposing the flux in two parts, a convective. Uh, uh, convective part rho i u and the diffusion part of the flux called the diffusion flux and introducing this like decomposition in in uh, a, a, in the uh, in the equation in the Lagrangian form you obtain this uh, a Lagrangian form here uh, where the uh, uh, 
the derivative of the quantity A multiplied by the density is simply the diffusion flux uh, plus the production uh, uh, term of the species here. And for a conserved scalar, uh, the Lagrangian form is simply uh, the, the takes sim this simple form where you have only the diffusion flux, while here in this form you have the complete flux. So this is the difference between a uh, 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 Lagrangian form and a uh, Eulerian form. The flux is different, and the difference of the two flux is a convective flux. <coughs> Alors, one has to be careful with the energy, as you will, as you will see, because this de, uh, energy, uh, the uh, conservation equation of energy is a little bit uh, tedious to uh, uh, find out. Now, uh, considering uh, the mass fraction of uh, species, which is simply the ratio of the number of particles uh, 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 multiplied by the mass uh, divided by, uh, uh, this is, uh, in a sense, rho u, rho y is a, ma is, is a mass of y, species y, divided by the unit volume, and the mass fraction is this mass divided by the total density, such a way that by definition, the sum of the mass fraction is unity. For an inert mixture, there is no production of species because there is no reaction rate, so that the, the, the uh, 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 equation, conservation equation of uh, takes uh, this simple form, there is no <coughs> uh, term of production and by definition of the mass fraction, which are such that the sum over all the species of the mass fraction is unity, you are uh, considering this equation that the, the sum of all the diffusion flux should be zero when you use a Lagrangian uh, formulation. So, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, in the kinetic theory of gas, it's uh, one show that this mass flux uh, follow what is called a fixed law, saying that the diffusion flux, when, when you have a binary diffusion of the species in an abundant species, this flux, diffusion flux, takes a simple form, which is written here. It is proportional to minus the, the gradient of the mass fraction. And the constant and the, the coefficient here is just uh, uh, the called the diffusion coefficient of the species i in the abundant species. This form, uh, uh, when the mixture, when there is no abundant species, the, uh, this, this law are much more complicated but they are not very useful uh, to understand the basic phenomena. We can, we can use only the fixed law in the following, assuming that there is a, an abundant species, for example, like the nitrogen in air. <coughs> and using this fixed law, the equation, the, the, uh, uh, the conservation equation of the species E takes the form of a diffusion equation, which says that the uh, derivative with respect of time of the mass fraction is the equal to the Laplacian of the mass fraction multiplied by the diffusion uh, coefficient dy, which is a positive quantity, uh, 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 which is necessarily a positive quantity because the production rate, uh, the entropy production, as we will see, should be positive. This equation is the archetype 
of an irreversible phenomenon. Uh, 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 if you use, if you consider the diffusive this diffusive equation uh, as Fourier did in the beginning of the 19th century, he did that for the heat, for the temperature, and but it is the same. For, uh, uh, Fourier was working for the temperature, <laughs> but it is the same for the mass fraction of any species. Uh, when you use a decomposition uh, as Fourier did, uh, a Fourier decomposition of uh, the function mass fraction uh, function of R that you decompose like in uh, 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 waves, uh, <coughs> harmonic waves in space, the coefficient of each uh, uh, K is a wave number. Uh, the coefficient of uh, 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 the, the, this exponential term is should be is, is a Fourier component of uh, the mass fraction, and this is uh, now a, a function of time. When you introduce this decomposition inside the Fourier equation, because the Fourier equation is linear you obtain an equation for any component. But now the equation is an algebraic equation saying that the time derivative, the derivative with respect to time of the Fourier component is simply minus the, the uh, uh, Fourier component times here uh, the, the product of the diffusion coefficients multiply by uh, uh, the k square here, which is obtained because uh, when you derive uh, with respect to space, you let y i k going down twice and this using that k square, uh, calling k, uh, uh, this k, the modulus of the vector, you have d k square. See, this Give you an ex uh, give you an exponential relaxation of any component, uh, a Fourier component of uh, the profile, and <clears throat> this is the, uh, a, a very simple result, explaining that the wave number smaller, larger is the wave number, faster is the decrease of the component, which means that uh, shorter is the wavelength. Wavelength is 2 pi divided by the wave number. So shorter is the wavelength, faster is the relationship. And, and, and uh, uh, there is a much more uh, elaborate result, which is the, that, which is the following. Uh, if you consider the general solution of the uh, uh, okay, okay, of the uh, diffusion equation using as an initial condition a delta function. Yes, you assume that all the particles are located in the same point, at, and and this is uh, and this is normalized to unity. Now, the general solution of this problem, I will not show that it's a classical result in applied mathematics, but uh, uh, just keep the result in mind. It tells you that the result, uh, the, cell, the solution of the diffusion equation is the Gaussian relaxation Gaussian that I have just talked about in my first lecture, <coughs> which is a probability distribution of the test particle in, in, in turn when talking about uh, the random work. It's exactly this is an exact result, uh, explaining that uh, 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 how the, the diffusive process is a relaxation process. That, uh, 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 so, and for any initial profile of density, you obtain the general solution by uh, uh, by this uh, uh, 
uh, by the this this is called a green function uh, by uh, uh, using this kind of composition that uh, uh, with the green function. This is a general result in applied math that I will not discuss longer, but it just tells you that how the diffusion uh, equation describe a relaxation process. Uh, the conservation of momentum now, momentum when the system is isolated, uh, meaning that the system has, a, uh, there is no external forces, uh, 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 the momentum is a conserved scalar. So if the momentum is a conserved scalar, it should take the form written here. Uh, this is a, is a velocity, is, is a vector, u is a vector, is a flow, is a flow speed, is a vector, is a field, urt, <coughs> depending on space and time, is a vector. So that is, a, 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 it, this flux should be a tensor for in such a way that the contraction with the divergence is uh, 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 give you a scalar. Uh, this uh, uh, tensor uh, uh, is described surface force, uh, which can be decomposed in two parts. One which is isotropic is is hydrostatic is a pre or the thermodynamic pressure, and the other part, <coughs> this is isotropic, the other part is a viscous stress tensor, which is decomposed in two parts also. One is uh, uh, due to uh, uh, the shear viscosity. Uh, yeah, this is a part coming from the shear viscosity and which is related to the rate of uh, strain tensor, which S means symmetric, you may symmetry. And the other part is, a, you know, it's a divergence of the, the flow velocities. This is a, is a scalar, and this is a unit uh, uh, tensor. And so this is, uh, uh, now if you add the gravity forces, uh, the general uh, uh, form is the Navier-Stokes equation Okay, uh, so uh, if you have a, a, a gravity force, you just have to add to the e thermodynamic pressure the term rho g z is, is the altitude is a z component uh, uh, where uh, of of the of r, and you have uh, the shear viscosity coming from this, uh, uh, this part here, which is the Laplacian of the uh, vector uh, velocity, and you have the gradient of the divergence of u coming from here. So I do not enter into the detail. This is a classical uh, in every uh, uh, fluid mechanic book. So uh, I will not describe this in too detail. I just recall you this, uh, what is called the Navier-Stokes equation. <clears throat> and what is important is to define uh, 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 the diffusivity which is associated in this, where it is, okay, which is associated. You know, if I, you forget all this term, pressure, and this volumetric term here, yeah, you have an equation saying that rho du over dt is equal eta Laplacian u. This is exactly the same form of uh, uh, the, the uh, excuse me, of the uh, uh, diffusion equation I have just, uh, that I have just mentioned. So in a sense, viscosity, this term uh, eta, which is uh, uh, divided by rho, see, this, uh, this stress viscosity divided by rho is a diffusion coefficient for the flow 
a, a vector, you see? So it's, this is a diffusion equation. And you define a viscous diffusivity, which is a ratio eta divided by the by rho. <coughs> In the Euler equation is when you completely neglect the viscosity, and if you neglect also the gravity, which is the way it's said, and you keep only this, you have this form that rho d over dt is simply minus the gradient of the pressure. And this is what is called a non-dissipative equation. What does that mean? You know, in the navier stokes equation, this part, Laplacian of u, eta, Laplacian of u, which describes a diffusion equation, is going to describe a re viscous relaxation of the flow velocity towards zero. And, but if you do not have this, uh, viscous, if you neglect the viscous effect, there is no more dissipation rate. There is no more mechanism uh, to decrease by, uh, by, uh, uh, by diffusion uh, the flow, the velocity of the, the flow velocity. And this is called a non-dissipative equation. This will become more clear when, go, when we are going uh, to describe uh, the entropy production. Now, let's go to the total energy. Uh, uh, the energy local per unit mass uh, of uh, the mixture <coughs> is uh, uh, decomposed in first what is called an internal energy, which is composed of the thermal energy, which is the uh, thermal agitations of the molecule inside the, uh, uh, the small fluid particles that you are considering at the point R plus a chemical energy, which is associated to the chemical bonds that I have uh, just uh, uh, introduced in my first lecture. This thermal energy can be uh, uh, composed of different energy, kinetic, rotation, vibration, but I do not, it's not necessary to enter into the detail. detail. It's just keep in mind that in the internal energy, you have a, a thermal energy and a chemical energy. Um, uh, and this ener internal energy, uh, when, the mole when you can neglect the interaction in molecules, this is a delicate question, is an additive, is simply an additive, which means that it is that this energy uh, 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 it, it, it can be uh, is an additive process. The total energy is this energy, internal energy of uh, inside, in, uh, inside each uh, uh, fluid particle, plus the kinetic energy of the gravity, of the center of gravity of this particle. And this is simply uh, by un per unit mass is simply u square divided by two by two. Uh, so this is the total energy. Total energy should be a conserved scalar. This is a principle, uh, a general principle of in physics. So uh, energy is a conserved scalar. Like uh, uh, mass is a conserved scalar if there is no reaction. Uh, uh, total mass is a conserved scalar. Uh, so now, uh, if it is a, a conserved scalar, the Lagrangian form should of this total energy or this this Euler form and the total form uh, differ only by the flux uh, 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 by the form of the flux that differ by the convective flux as I have explained in the first lecture. Uh, when the flux, when the flow is inviscid and inert, the Euler equation, we, we will find the first law of thermodynamics. The Euler equations uh, 
when you multiply the Euler, equa Euler equation uh, in a scalar u, uh, you obtain uh, rho d u, you have u scalar d over dt u, this is one half d over dt u square. And because you, you, without u, you have minus grand, gradient of p, now you have minus u grad of p. You are just multiply uh, with a multiply by uh, the Euler equation uh, in a scalar form with u. And yes, when you distribute uh, uh, the, the derivative in space, you can write that minus the divergence of p u plus the p divergence of u. <coughs> now, the, here, here comes the, uh, the interesting, the delicate, the delicate uh, uh, question of the heat flux. It turns out that the uh, heat flux you define, you define a heat flux like the total diffusion flux of the diffusion flux of total energy minus PU. This is the definition. And if you introduce that and you used now uh, this, this form uh, plus this form, you obtain this simple form where the uh, thermal energy plus uh, the derivative of the thermal energy plus the chemical energy is just the divergence of this flux minus P divergence of U. And this P divergence of U is nothing, this is nothing else than the first law of thermodynamics saying that the way to change the uh, internal energy of uh, a system is through the heat, uh, the flux, this is the flux of heat through the boundary and or the work done, uh, uh, P uh, delta volume, which is, you know, divergence U using uh, the form, the conservative form of uh, the mass is, is rho d over dt is minus, is rho d over dt, uh, one over rho d over dt, which is the volumetric. This is nothing else than the work done uh, well, uh, the, the well-known law, first law of thermodynamics, written in the local form. Now, uh, this is uh, beautiful, but what is this expression of the heat flux? And here come the Fourier law, the Fourier law, and this can be shown precisely by working with the Boltzmann equation and so on. I skip this kind of uh, discussion, which is uh, which are difficult, in fact. Uh, but it, it turns out that written in that way, the uh, uh, the uh, flux, the heat flux, is simply related to the gradient of the temperature uh, uh, by what is called the thermal conductivity, which was uh, used by Fourier. In fact, this is the simplest form of heat flux. When you deal with a, a, a complex a, a mixture of many species, you may have much more complicated law relating the flux, not only to the gradient of temperature, but to also to the gradient of the mass fraction. But this term is usually small and the dominant part is the, is the part uh, for the heat flux coming from the gradient of the temperature. Uh, so I will not enter into uh, this detail uh, uh, form where you have all additional term because this just add complexity, but not new phenomena or let's say not uh, 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 important phenomena in the physics of the frame that I am going to describe. So the, the thermal diffusivity now uh, is simply, uh, if you write that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, thermal the thermal energy 
Yes, uh, if you introduce a specific heat uh, uh, per unit volume times the delta for variation of uh, temperature, you obtain from this equation here and here a diffusion equation. And the diffusion coefficient that you obtain is lambda divided by rho C CV, what this is called the diffusion coefficient, thermal diffusivity, which is the same uh, as in, in, in which is the same order of magnitude as any molecular diffusion, except when in the species are very, very light. So uh, keep in mind that this diffusion coefficient is uh, uh, um, the, uh, as for dimension, a length squared divided by a time. Uh, uh, and you recover the, uh, with this, if you uh, keep only uh, uh, the, the, excuse me, if you only keep this and this and you forget about the geometry and the work done, you have only the Fourier equation. Uh, showing that uh, this, that this part of the heat flux, this heat flux, diffusive heat flux, is a phenomena, a dissipative phenomena, like uh, uh, the diffusion, the molecular diffusion, diffusion uh, uh, through the Fourier equation. For reacting flow, <coughs> you you have usually many species, and you define the reaction rate. Uh, which is uh, the number of uh, 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 per unit volume and unit time of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, which is defining the reaction rate uh, 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 for each uh, for each reaction G J G excuse me <laughs> you know for a reaction G. Uh, and for you, you have a, a reaction rate of this type because you have a reaction in this that direction and in the reverse reaction. And uh, uh, you introduce uh, the stoichiometric coefficient, which is the difference on the, the coefficient on the left hand side from the right hand side minus the rest left hand side. So that's the conservation equation for any species. Uh, take the form of a diffusion equation here plus a production term that can be expressed express in terms of the reaction rate. And M I is a molecule, is a mass, uh, is a molar mass of the species I. And J, G, G is uh, the index of uh, the elementary reaction. Therefore, using the fixed law for the diffusion coefficient, you obtain this classical form in the Lagrangian, uh, written in the Lagrangian form for the conservation of uh, uh, each species. Uh, y, y i is a mass fraction of the species y. This is a diffusion coefficient, is a diffusion, rho dy grad y is a diffusive flux of a species y, and this is a production rate. You have to sum, sum over all the reaction, the production of the species y. So this gives you a, a general equation, general form of the equation. So uh, the chemical energy uh, can be written uh, uh, as a, a, a sum of its uh, of uh, introducing what is called in chemistry the enthalpy of formation per unit mass of species E. You have this form uh, of the chemical energy, and uh, in such a way. Uh, that the heat release for the GIS G, G, G reaction, reaction J here, is simply this expression in terms of 
the enthalpy of formation. This is a classical way to write the heat release uh, uh, for multiple uh, 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 multi component uh, species, a mixture of multi uh, components, multi components. <clears throat> Therefore, the chemical, uh, the, <clears throat> the balance of the chemical energy written in the Lagrangian equation takes take this form where G prime Y is a mass, is a diffusion flux here of the species one. H is the enthalpy of formation per unit mass and Q, Y, J is a heat release by the GIS reaction and double point G is a reaction rate, uh, which is defined by unit volume, pardon, per unit volume and unit time. Therefore, the total balance uh, in, uh, of uh, an ambicid flow of reacting gas is, is uh, take this form here for the chemical energy. Now, when you, because of the form of the total energy, which is written here, <clears throat> now uh, the heat flux is uh, introduced compared to the case where you have only one species, is you have to, to add to the, the form without for a single species, you have to find to add the uh, diffusion flux multiplied of each, each species multiplied by the enthalpy of formation. And now it is this GQ, which is defined like that, which is, which is satisfied uh, <clears throat> the Fourier equation. Uh, now, uh, uh, if you assume uh, that the specific heat are constant for simplicity, which is an assumption which is easily removed, you obtain this form this uh, form for the temperature, uh, which is uh, that uh, where, uh, where you see immediately, uh, this is the thermal energy, a Lagrangian variation of the thermal energy is associated, uh, is this variation is due to the heat release, the work done, uh, and the heat release. That's a very simple expression, in fact, uh, 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 for the uh, equation for the temperature. Uh, now you can use the, the continuity equation, uh, that is the conservation of mass. If you multiply by the pressure, the conservation of mass, uh, you yeah, which is you obtain this this term p diversion, which is appear here, can take uh, can take, can take, can be written in the form p multiplied by d over dt rho divided by rho, and this you can now uh, put this in this form d over dt p because this simplify minus now uh, d over dt. Uh, 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 P over rho, and using the ideal, the ideal gas law, P equals Cp minus Cb rho T, you obtain here this form. Now, if when you now notice the, the minus sign uh, that you have that you have here coming from the ideal ideal gas law. And when you put now this expression into uh, uh, here, you see that you have a balance of this CV term <coughs> because your minus minus is CVT, which disappear with this. And we are, you are left with this CP now 
coming from here. So now the kernel equation of an explicit field take a similar form as uh, uh, the other, except that now you have CP, which is the, that this enthalpy, and now you have the conduction term, the chemistry it really is, and a compression, a, compress, a, a pressure term, which is associated with the work done by compression, you know, in, in the first law of uh, thermodynamics. So this is a general form uh, of the thermal equation uh, for an MVC field. Therefore, to summarize, a uh, uh, governing equation for implicit flow of reactive gas are described by continuity equation, Euler equation, ideal gas, excuse me, ideal, ideal gas law, thermal equation of this form that I just derived for you, and the mass conservation and the conservation of mass of each its species where appear in both in this both in these two equations the uh, uh, reaction rate of each reaction here here it appear with the stoichiometric coefficient of the reaction g here appear the heat release of this reaction so this is the equation the governing equation uh, 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 for an implicit flow of reactive gas. This equation can be written in a conservative form, which is written here, <coughs> and in such a way that uh, uh, you, you can uh, uh, you introduce now the conservative form by introducing the, 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 the by taking out the convective flux out from the total flux of energy, introducing this quantity here, and you have here, you know, a conservative form of the total energy, which I'm not going to use the, uh, so often, but sometimes it could be useful, saying that why it is a conservative form now, uh, 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 it is because it is, this time derivative, the derivative versus time here of this Lagrangian uh, is just the divergence of the flux. And in this flux, you have the convective flux, you have a term coming from the pressure, and a term coming from the heat flux, and a term coming from the molecular diffusion of each species, time, the enthalpy of formation of the species. But this can be written uh, 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 and it is written easily here. And you see up here what is called here the convective flux of enthalpy. So with the energy, one has to be careful that the total flux of energy is a diffusive flux, but the convective flux is a rather different. It's not only rho u time the energy per unit mass, but plus a term com coming from the pressure P over rho. This is a difficult, uh, the, the progress variable uh, for the progress, for a progress variable of, of uh, 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 this is called the progress variable. Uh, you have this equation here and the total energy plus the P over O is simply CPT plus U square minus QM, uh, the progress variable here, which is defined here. For viscous flow, uh, the problem is a little bit uh, more complicated and it, it, it will not be used uh, in, my, in my lecture, so I will not enter into the detail, but it turns out that uh, uh, the one dimensional compressible flow written here, uh, I give that just uh, for, for you, uh, uh, that's a conservative one dimension 
of a one-dimensional composite flow is written here and could be useful the, in your in your in your uh, uh, current uh, studies. I will not use that. Now let me finish this uh, uh, this lecture by the entropy production. So <clears throat> entropy is a quantity, uh, a thermodynamic quantity, uh, a thermodynamic uh, uh, a function, which depends on density, temperature, and and uh, and mass fraction. This is, this is a function, and is called a is, a is a function of state that is not conserve is not a conserved quantity, as we will see. It will take the form, it's a, a local balance, will take the form, this form here, with a flux and the production. And the second law of thermodynamics tells you that the production of entropy should be positive. Why? Because the second law of thermodynamics tells you that when the system <laughs> is isolated, the entropy should, should grow. So when the system is isolated, there is no flux. So because the, the entropy should grow, and this should be true whatever be the size of the, uh, uh, of the system, this or the production term should be positive. This is uh, the expression of the second law of thermodynamic in the local form. Now, if you use the thermodynamic relation relating the entropy, the variation of entropy, TDS, DET, which is the variation of the thermal energy, <coughs> PDV minus mu, mu, mu is the poten chemical potential of why this is a general uh, a relation of the thermodynamic given by the thermodynamic, and in, uh, and just I recall that in an ideal ideal gas, this entropy is just related to the logarithm of p over rho power, uh, the ratio of specific heat. This is a, a well known form in uh, for the thermodynamic in real gases. So now when you uh, uh, go back to the balance in Lagrangian, you, you have in the Lagrangian form, you have T, D over DTS, T, D over DT, uh, Lagrangian derivative of the thermal energy, P, the, this is the volume one over rho, volume per unit mass, minus mu, D, Y, D, T. This is the form obtained from for the, the expression coming from the thermodynamics. Excuse me. Uh, ah. Okay. Now, uh, 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 now if you put all these things together, all this heat uh, balance uh, for the internal energy, the species, and then, it turns out that this expression of the production rate that you are going to obtain, this is it's just it's straightforward. It's complicated, but straightforward to this form. And the thermodynamics uh, and the thermodynamic uh, second law of thermodynamics tell you that each term here should be positive because each term here are in fact a dissipative term. You see, this is a heat flux related to the gradient of the temperature. This is a max flux, which is related uh, with, with the gradient of the chemical potential. And this is a, 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 a viscous uh, tensor divided to the stress rate. Uh, so uh, what we have to keep in mind uh, uh, or maybe even 
I will not use that, but this is for your general uh, knowledge of the physics of this, that, for example, in inert mixture and uh, uh, in one dimensional geometry, the, f the entropy flux is simply the convective flux of entropy uh, plus the diffusive flux because it is related to, D, to the gradient of T divided by T because simply it is TDS which is related to the uh, thermal energy. And then uh, the production is, can take the form according to, uh, to what is written here, take the form of a quadratic term with coefficient mu and lambda. And it turns out that because you have a quadratic term here, in order to satisfy the second law of thermodynamics, saying that each term must be positive, you, are, you find out that the, viscous, the, uh, the viscosity should be positive and the con and conductivity should be positive. <laughs> and there is another form which is often used, uh, which is this, this form here, that it is a little bit confusing because when you write, when you write uh, rho t ds over dt, uh, you obtain as a flux only land the heat flux and it, you do not see any contribution of the heat uh, uh, conductivity in terms of the production. This is simply uh, uh, the fact that you uh, that you, instead of using uh, rho ds over dt, you, you use rho t ds over dt. But this is, you can find uh, these two different forms that are equivalent in the literature. So uh, it looks to me that it is time of a 10 minute breaks uh, before the last lecture of the day. Okay, so 10 minute breaks. All right. So uh, the third lecture is uh, an interesting one, maybe much more interesting than the previous one, is uh, the solution for the uh, thermal propagation of frames a uh, solution obtained by uh, Zeldovich uh, in around the 30, 1938. Uh, it's a wonderful piece of work, uh, which is not easy to understand, but uh, not difficult to, it's not a technical difficulty. It's a difficulty of understanding of what is called now asymptotic method uh, uh, for solving uh, nonlinear problems. <clears throat> First, let's uh, uh, excuse me, I have a problem with my, oh, where is my pointer? Uh, sorry, I have a problem with the pointer. Uh, okay, here is it. <clears throat> First of all, let's me uh, discuss the, the, the quasi isovariate approximation associated with the low Mach number approximation. When you look to the, when you balance in the Euler equation, uh, the, the nonlinear term of, of the velocity and the gradient of the pressure, uh, you order of magnitudes uh, comparing these two terms tell you that the variation of the pressure should be of the order of the variation of the velocity of the variation of velocity time rho u, okay? But uh, because from uh, thermodynamics, you know that p is of the order of rho times the squ square of the velocity of the sound. <coughs> uh, so this tells you that the relative pressure velocity is uh, 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 is P u delta u 
divide by rho a square. If delta u is so far the u, you obtain that this a variation of the pressure is of order of what is called the max square of the propagation of the frame, which is the ratio of the uh, uh, frame propagation divided by the sound speed to the square. And <clears throat> if you add that, and if you, in, in addition, the term, the end steady term uh, 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 is such, is, of the, is balanced by a U grad term, which is much smaller than uh, the sound speed multiplied by the, uh, uh, and the modulus of the gradient. Uh, and assuming uh, 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 this tell you that uh, 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 when you are very subsonic flow, the variation of pressure is, is oh, excuse me, where is my, my pointer? Here it is. Uh, the variation of, pr of pressure, relative variation of pressure is much smaller uh, uh, of an order of the max square uh, than the re relative variation of the temperature. In such a way that <coughs> when uh, 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 it, that now because of this relation, uh, the variation of pressure is negligible in terms of the, vari the relative variation is negligible in front of the re relative variation of the temperature. Uh, 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 this gives you that the, the pressure uh, uh, times uh, uh, the variation of, of the pressure dp over dt is much smaller than rho cp dt over dt in such a way that the pressure term in the thermal energy that I have written for you in the previous lecture, this pressure term yeah, is fully negligible in compared to this one because of the quasi-isobaric approximation, which corresponds to a low Mach number approximation. The, uh, so uh, this is a basic simplification occurring in frame. The, all the pressure term, the variation of the pressure term is negligible in the energy equation. So the energy equation reduced to a thermal balance without flow. The flow appear only in the Lagrangian form d over dt, which is a, a partial derivative relative to t plus u grad u. But except this u, that you have in the Lagrangian derivative, there is no more pressure appear, there is no more flow appearing in the equation. <coughs> now, uh, because uh, uh, now, in addition of that, because of uh, the uh, where is uh, because of the uh, pressure that does not vary, does not vary. The, the product rho t is constant. Uh, equation of t reduced to this uh, uh, purely thermal equation, and which is quite similar to the uh, uh, conservation equation of the mass of each species. You see, simply, you see the analogy are clear when you look to this, uh, to this form. This is thanks to the fact that the pressure has disappeared from, uh, from the energy equation. Just a warning, <coughs> this is valid because magnum, the propagation is much smaller than the speed of sound. So this cannot work for detonation, for example. It's a typical approximation for a frame <coughs> for we, in which the, uh, the transport of energy, which is the main mechanism of propagation when it is coupled to the heat release, is the heat conduction, which is similar to the in turn. You know, there is no difference between these two equations, thermal and spacious. Now, I will just point 
make some comment uh, concerning uh, uh, the frame speed. One has to consider different uh, 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 configuration. The configuration on the left here configuration of the left is, is a frame propagating in a tube open up from one side to the close end of the, uh, uh, of the tube on the other side. So it is the frame propagating toward, toward the wall. This is, a, uh, the, in that case, the burn gas flow is trapped, is <coughs> Should be quiescent uh, 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 because of the, because it is limited by the wall. Now, <clears throat> on the opposite configuration, when a flame propagate from the closed end of the tube to the to an open end, it is a burned gas which is at rest. So you see, in that case. The, 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 the fresh mixture, the fresh gas, it at rest. In the opposite, in the other configuration, propagation from the close end towards the open end, <coughs> and now it's a burn gas. And the link between the two situation is obtained when you look uh, in the reference frame of the flame. You know, the, 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 when you sit, if you sit on the frame, in both of this, you will see, you know, here, if you sit on the frame, you will see the flow incoming the fresh mixture with the laminar flame speed. And because of the conservation of mass, rho u is constant. So the flow enter relative to the uh, <coughs> to the flame, to the planar flame, enter with the laminar flame speed and escape from the flame with a burned gas, which is larger than the laminar flame speed by the density, by the ratio density, which is by the inverse of the ratio density, which is in fact the temperature ratio. So uh, now, if you come here to go from, and if you go from here to here, you find, <coughs> <coughs> you will find simply that uh, uh, the, the burned gas now in, in the reference frame of the lab, uh, when the flame propagates towards the closed end, the burned gas flow escape uh, toward by the open end, with the difference of UB minus UL, which is written here. And, and, and this is like in your rocket engine when uh, the, uh, the frame is, is, uh, is enclosed in, by a wall. So the flame escape, the burnt gas flow, flow out the tube from the open side by a velocity which is different of the burn gas velocity from here minus the laminar flame speed. And this is simply T over T U minus L. What is <coughs> interesting and will, uh, things which will have a big consequence for the transition of deflagration to detonation from flame deflagration, transition from deflagration to detonation that uh, we are going, I am going to study for you uh, uh, in the second, uh, in the end of this lecture, in the, I say it will be in the, uh, uh, around the, the lecture, uh, must be 10 or 9, I don't remember. It, 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 the following is that now if the burn gas is at rest, it turns out that the flow, the, the fresh mixture is put, should be put in motion by a difference of UB minus UL. You see, and, and so, uh, so the, you have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, interesting phenomena 
that when a flame propagates from the closed end of a tube, it put in motion all the colon of gas of fresh mixture ahead of the flame. So uh, as you may understand that if the tube is infinite, infinite, this is the problem. How can you put in motion instantaneously an infinite uh, quantity of uh, an infinite mass of gas? It's not possible. I will explain, excuse me. I will explain that uh, in later in, in uh, lecture. But for the moment, just keep in mind uh, <clears throat> this picture. When you sit on the flame, the fresh mixture enter with a laminar flame speed and escape with a burned gas. And uh, where we have used the mass conservation and the quasi-isobaric approximation, saying that the product temperature time density is constant. Alors, working in the reference frame of the, of the, uh, in, you know, the difference with the previous, uh, uh, that now uh, uh, the burn gas on the, uh, uh, the, the fresh mixture is on the left, you know, but this is the same, okay? This is a fresh mixture of burn gas, <coughs> and, the, and, and the axes are oriented toward the burn gas. Now, uh, if the system, if, if there is a steady state equation, now rho d, d, d over dt is rho u d over dx because the, the derivative over the time uh, disappears if you're in steady state. So this uh, Lagrangian derivative becomes simply a space, spatial sp derivative with respect to space time the mass flux rho u, rho u ul equal rho u ul, and, uh, and now uh, uh, the uh, equation that I have written in my, uh, at the beginning of the lecture for the thermal equation and for the sp it's, it's species takes the form of the first order differential, a uh, second order differential equation in space, you have only now uh, a variable, which is the space variable. And you are here in the right hand side, uh, you, you have uh, 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 the, uh, the, the production due to the reaction, heat release and consumption or production of spaces Y by the reaction. So this two, this is the system of equations that I have, you have to solve. And <clears throat> in this problem, you do not know what is rho u. And it turns out that this rho u here, the mass flux, which is uh, rho u, ul or ub, ub, this unknown here, is going to be determined by determined by a, a solution of this equation when you impose a boundary condition that at minus infinity here you are in the fresh mixture with a zero reaction rate because you are frozen uh, because the temperature is too low and uh, the reaction uh, the reaction are frozen, and in the and, and you have the temperature T U that are given, and the composition is given, and in the boundary condition, on the other side, on the burn gas, you should have uh, on the burn gas the gradient of temperature uh, equal zero, and the, the the spaces should be equal to the equilibrium. Uh, uh, given by the equilibrium, chemical equilibrium at the burned gas temperature. So when you impose this relation, the boundary condition to the system of equation, you find 
you will find the unknown, which is the mass flux across the planar frame. So <coughs> this is a, a, pro a typical problem uh, of reaction diffusion wave. I will just mention that at the end of this lecture, the, uh, this general equation that are uh, difficult. It is a very difficult, a tough, a tough mathematical problem. I will simply, simply consider one step irreversible reaction. This, uh, which was used uh, in the uh, uh, in the work of Zelovich uh, uh, and Frank Kamineski in 38, 1938. So it's uh, you you consider that the reaction reduced to the decomposition of an inert R here <coughs> into a product by liberating he and uh, it, and you call Y the max fraction of the reactant. Uh, now I have written once again the equation for this system, temperature, spatial Y, the unknown, and I have introduced the energy rele released per unit mass of reactant called QR. And this is the reaction rate. Uh, and the boundary conditions are very clear. Uh, that in the fresh mixture, on the left hand side, when x is going to minus infinity, because the flame is assumed to propagate from, uh, 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 you know, you know, the flame here is assumed to propagate in the left and when you sit on the flame you have the unburned mixture on the left and the burned gas on on the right so now the equation is the, the boundary condition now are the following but at minus infinity you know the composition. This is a given uh, temperature and composition are given. And what you know is that in the burn gas, you should have, because the reaction is assumed to be irreversible. This is a, a, a simplification that simplify uh, <coughs> the analysis, but uh, uh, it is easy to get rid of this kind of of, uh, of the, this irreversible equation, but it's not necessary. First, we have to understand this simple model before to, to go to much more elaborate model. And now if you, a, a first relation is very easy to understand. If you integrate the second equation for the spacious from minus infinity to plus infinity, the first term on the left give you m y u minus zero, so m y u. This term give you zero because the the uh, the uh, uh, composition is is constant on both sides, uh, fresh mixture and burn side. And now you have simply that the right hand side give you the integral of the reaction rate, that's all. And so the integral of the reaction rate, it's uh, uh, give you in principle the mass flux, but, but because you do not know the form of the reaction rate, the distribution of reaction rate, uh, this uh, is not the answer. It simply give you the relations that you have between M and the integral. And now if you use this equation here in, in the first uh, equation, you have M, now you, you find on the left hand side uh, CPTB minus TU, temperature on, on TB will be the temperature, TB, <coughs> and this is given, TB will be simply given by this right hand side, 
which is QR, QR time and U, because the M here, here disappear on both on both sides. You see? So this does not give you any information <coughs> on the propagation speed, let's say the unknown is UL, the laminar flame speed. It tells you simply the, the, that the, the burn gas temperature and the, the difference of the burn gas temperature and the uh, 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 fresh, in the temperature of the fresh mixture is simply relate to the heat release. This is a, a trivial, trivial relation. Now I will use, uh, in, in, I will use, following Zaldovich and Frank Kamineski, I uh, will use an Arrhenius law that I have uh, written, here, written here. I will use uh, a first order reaction telling that the, re the reaction rate is proportional to the mass fraction of the reactant. This is say, in chemistry, we say that this is an order one reaction. And uh, that the reaction time is given by the Arrhenius law, which is, as I explained in the first lecture, is, is a Arrhenius factor divided by the collision. And the temperature and the maximum reaction rate, this, a maximum term yeah, is, is at the burn is on the burn gas side. A simple uh, uh, algebraic relation uh, 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 allow to express the uh, uh, the reaction rate in terms of the reduced temperature. You know the reduced temperature, the small theta here. Uh, is, uh, which is defined here, is zero in the fresh mixture and one in the burn mixture, exactly uh, as the ratio y divided by y u, the mass fraction of the space of the reactive is, is, is one in the fresh mixture and zero on the burn side. And now the Arrhenius law can be written in this form that is written here. And what you have to keep in mind is this, this term beta here is the activation energy uh, uh, reduced by the uh, kinetic, uh, uh, by the thermal energy in the, on the burn gas, multiplied by this coefficient, which is a coefficient of our unity typically uh, in, in, in flames. This, so this, this beta is going to be a large number. And you have a, a TB term here in front of that. Now, let me consider the case where the two diffusivity thermal in the thermal equation and V molecular diffusivity, diffusivity in, the, uh, in the equation for the conservation of species are the same. So uh, <clears throat> as we know, reduced temperature and mass fraction varies on the same in the, uh, in the uh, between zero and one, both varies between zero and one. And the two equations are quite similar. When you do the mass, the reduced mass fraction and the reduced temperature, the two fractions, the two equation, if the Lewis number, which is the ratio of the two diffusivity is unity, these two equations are exactly the same. In such a way, and because of, of uh, 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 the boundary condition, when theta is zero, uh, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, yes, when theta equals zero, psi equal one, because y equal y u, and when theta equal one in the burn gas, uh, you should have a psi equal zero because y is zero, because you have consumed the reactant. And <coughs> the, uh, the reaction, the, 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 
reaction rate here takes this Arrhenius form with this with the term. When Lewis equal one, the two equations uh, are similar because psi equal one minus theta, because they, they are the same equation and the boundary condition for psi and one over minus theta are the same. So the, the two equations are the same. In this problem now, uh, the problem reduced to sort of a single uh, 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 differential equation of second order where uh, M is unknown, rho d is known, and the, 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 the reaction rate can be expressed as a nonlinear, is a nonlinear uh, 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 function of theta because t can be also expanding in, in terms of theta. But I, as you will see, this uh, is going to, when it, it does, it, it's just a complication that can be, that is easy to get, it is easy to get rid of. The problem of uh, <coughs> uh, the, genial, the genial idea of Zeldovich and Frank Kamineski was to look to to this problem with this, when this acti in the limit of a very large activation energy. You know, this activation energy, as I told you at the, in the first lecture, is a large number, let's say between eight and 10, something like that, is large. Now, consider the problem in the limit of uh, this activation energy is very large. And, and, and in that case, if you look to the production rate here, you see this production rate is not, as soon as theta is slightly smaller than one, sufficiently smaller than one, because of this beta large exponential minus something large is negligibly small. Therefore, the reaction rate is concentrated uh, near uh, the, uh, the burn gas side, <coughs> with, if you plot, uh, the, you can reduce, uh, you can neglect uh, this difference because when the reaction rate is non-negligible, T is close to TB. So now you, you can forget about this TB over T and you simplify the equation. The, reaction, the expression of the reaction rate in terms of theta is simply this form one minus theta exponential minus beta one over theta and this is okay when beta is large and you have rho b derived by two the, and this explains why the reaction time that you have to consider is the reaction time on the outside and you can say okay but on the outside there is nothing to burn no oh, this is not quite right you have a few uh, just a little bit to to, to burn and with you you burn a little bit of reaction of the reactant but with a very fast re chemical reaction uh, chemical reaction rate uh, what you have to keep in mind is this is that the reaction rate in term of theta is zero everywhere except in a narrow band of theta close to theta equal one which is a burn gas. Okay. <clears throat> so now Zeldovich, uh, here is, I have re rewritten the problems that we have to solve. Find uh, to obtain uh, the, <coughs> the flame, the laminar flame speed, which is rho u, rho u, u herb, this m how solve this equation and try to find a solution uh, of this equation with this reaction rate here. And the, let's say the clever idea of Zeldovich is quite un unusual. Uh, the idea is uh, it's just the opposite of the, of the usual idea to solve a nonlinear problem. 
when you have a nonlinear problem, usually you try to find out the least nonlinear uh, term uh, equation that represent this nonlinear equation. Here is said, I am going to look to in the opposite direction to uh, 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 in the limit where the uh, 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 nonlinearity become dominant. And in that case, so he, he was looking to the, to the solution for an, uh, in the limit of the activation energy going to infinity. In this limit, clearly this the, the sin zone uh, of the reaction rates uh, go to zero. And the main, uh, the thickness of uh, uh, the flame is essentially controlled by the preheat zone, where the temperature increase from the cold side to the burned gas, to the burned gas temperature, only due to this, to this equation balance of the convection and diffusion without this term. And now solve the problem in this limit. <coughs> so in the pre zone, the problem is easily solved because you have to solve a secondary, uh, a linear equation. If you assume that now, which is a good approximation, but it is not difficult to get rid of this simplification. But uh, for the moment, assume that rho dt is constant, uh, which is a, a not so bad approximation in gas. In fact, it is a very good approximation in gaseous mixture. But so assume that this is a constant. But, so you have a second order differential equation with constant term. This is trivial to integrate. Uh, if you assume that, that uh, if you uh, take a uh, zero regime of, the of X at the reaction, this reaction zone, which is going to shrink to zero, and this assumes that this origin, this is the origin of X, uh, the integration of this equation using the boundary condition at minus infinity is an exponential growth of the temperature from, a min from zero to one at x equals zero. And, 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 and this is what is going to be called the external solution of the problem. It does not tell you what is M. It tells you the solution tells you what is the form of the solution in this external zone. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, okay, the thickness of this internal zone is dl rho dt divided by m. And now, uh, the, uh, you, you, you will solve this. Zeldovich and Frank Kamineski, but the main, I'm pretty sure that the main idea came from Zelovich. Zelovich was a student of Frank, not a student, he was young and Frank Kamineski. Uh, Zelovich, who at that time was uh, 38, he was 21 or something like that, a year old, he was very young. Uh, he, 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 he said that if we are able now to solve the problem, in the thin inner reaction zone, knowing the solution of the external zone, you we will find the solution by matching the flux uh, 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 coming uh, from the the thin reaction zone to preheat the <coughs> external solution and. He says that the, the, the flux, heat flux escaping the reaction zone should be equal to the thermal flux entering in the pre zone. And this is what is, we call a, a matching condition. So now the problem reduced to solve the inner reaction. So here is the problem. 
in our reaction. Now, let's have a, a, a look to each term of this equation in, in this inner zone. We call inner zone the reaction zone and outer zone the pre zone. So <coughs> the first equation, uh, uh, the first term to, to be analyzed is, a, is, is this convective term. And this is M times the variation of theta divided by the thickness of this zone. And uh, 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 the variation of theta here, this is something that one has to anticipate, as, as this is so far the one over beta, why it is one over beta, this variation, it is because the slope here is going to be uh, of order unity in such a way that the difference of temperature in this it in this small reaction zone is small of order one of the activation f. This is a key problem. So now, because you know the expression m by the external solution, which is written here, the, it is rho b dt divided by dl. D t, delta theta is one over beta and dt here. Okay, good. This is the first term. Let's have a look to the second term. The second term is <coughs> that you see is the second derivative. The second derivative, the order of magnitude is the variation of, of, the, of theta divided by the, the square of the thickness of this zone, dr square. So you obtain this form here, which looks like <coughs> the, fir the, the, first, the form to the first term, except that dl is replaced by d by that the flame thickness dl is replaced by the reaction the thickness of the reaction zone and it's clear that the reaction zone is much thinner than uh, uh, the flame thickness therefore uh, <coughs> this this term should be negligible in the reaction in the reaction zone should be the convective term should be negligible in front of the uh, secondary uh, the, con the second derivative term which is a conduction term uh, <coughs> so this being negligible now the problem that you have to to solve in the inner zone, reduced to this nonlinear equation where rudity is constant. Here you have a, a nonlinear term of theta. <coughs> now, if you look to the, uh, and so now this term, diffusion term, should be balanced by this term, by the reaction term. And this reaction term, this is so for the unity. One over theta is so far on one over beta. <coughs> uh, so this term is uh, the order of magnitude of this term is one over beta rho b divided by tau r. So you know the order of magnitude. And now if you compare, you know, uh, Now, if you uh, e compare these two terms here, you find immediately that the reaction, the, D, the, detonate, the thickness of the reaction zone should be given by the square root of uh, uh, dt divide, multiplied by tau rb. <coughs> So this term, uh, the convective, the diffusive term is balanced by the, the reactive. And it's clear that now this confer confirm that uh, the reaction, the thickness is much smaller than the, uh, 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 the, the thickness of the reaction zone 
is much thinner than the prey, the thickness of the prey zone. Now, <clears throat> how to solve this equation? It's not very difficult. The key uh, is to multiply this equation by dt tau over dx in such a way that on the left hand side, you have the derivative with respect to x to the first derivative to the derivative of theta divided by x squared when you multiply this equation by d tau over dx. And on the right hand side, you have this term. Now, <coughs> it's <coughs> It is uh, useful now to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, the <coughs> to air. Yes. Now it is uh, you, it is useful. It is uh, to um, uh, convenient to introduce uh, uh, this big theta, which is of order unity, because one of our data is of order one of the theta is of order unity. So that uh, in this equation, when you use big theta instead of uh, one minus theta, you are because of this and this one of the beta square term theta or minus theta over theta. And now, <coughs> now uh, in the asymptotic limit of beta goes to infinity or uh, 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 on the, uh, when, when, uh, uh, so this, this is zero on the burn gas side because theta equal one and on the fresh guys, uh, on the fresh side, <coughs> this term beta of uh, one, one minus theta is going to be infinity all because, because simply uh, when the theta is, uh, uh, the departure of theta from one is uh, larger than one over beta, this term is going to infinity because b there is a beta here. So this is a key point for the uh, matching condition, uh, 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 which can be demonstrated uh, by applied by, by asymptotic method, but it is not that. Zeldovich did not use complex, complicated analysis. He just say what I, I have written here is that this, the bound, the upper bound of this integral should go to infinity when you go to the external part of the reaction zone, uh, the upstream is part. So now if you <coughs> do that, this, and now you can integrate uh, uh, this can be integrated, it is equal to unity. Therefore, by equating uh, the left hand side and the right hand side with this going to infinity, you find, excuse me, ah, you find that the uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the 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 derivative the, the taking the square root of that you obtain uh, dt over uh, just uh, just a check something uh, well yes when you multiply now uh, you multiply also by dt b uh, the two sides you have here dt b square here you have dt and uh, 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 when you take now the square root of the left hand side you obtain dt b dt tau over dx equal uh, sorry is equal to the square root of uh, 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 two divide by t beta square here, square root, multiply by dtb divide by 2, two rb. So you obtain that this is the expression of the flux escaping the reaction zone to warm up the preheat zone. Okay? So <coughs> This, uh, 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 this flux 
should be equal to the flux computed, uh, uh, this, this flux escaping the reaction zone to uh, warm up the pre gas should be equal to the heat flux entering into the pre zone uh, that we have computed in the previous uh, slide. Therefore, putting that, you obtain that this should be equal to M, this flux. And now, because you know the expression of the flux, which is given here, you obtain the expression of M, which is the max flux divided by rho, which is the mass flux, which is the laminar flame speed uh, multiplied by rho u, which is equal to rho b. Uh, where is it? Yes, which is equal to rho b times this term, which is equal to this one, which is this square root here. So this is a wonderful calculation of Zelovich and Franz Kamineski giving the expression of the laminar flame speed, of the propagation of the flame of a planar flame, a laminar planar flame, which is obtained by matching the inner solution with the outer solution. This is clearly <coughs> a, a, master, a masterpiece. Uh, uh, I, in, to my opinion, is uh, there. After that, first of all, I should have to say that uh, this was obtained in thirty-eight, and I would say that this was not understood during twenty-five years by the combustion community, and the people begin to understand this computation, this calculation around the 70s, clearly. And this is uh, just to show how difficult it was to, and to pick up uh, the, uh, 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 the, the scientific idea uh, or the scientific, uh, uh, the genius of Zeldovich to obtain this equation. Now, now uh, you have, a <clears throat> uh, and you obtain that the, the ratio of the uh, uh, signals as is so for the one over beta, that's okay. But what is uh, important that you see that what, what, what the, uh, the um, uh, dimensional analysis the, uh, in my first lecture, tells you, tell, told you, S, S, this uh, in the dimensional analysis, so you know, you should, uh, by dimensional analysis, you should be the square root of the term of diffusion by a time. So this is exactly what happened here. And for the, for, for the, except that now you have a rho b over rho u here, and you have a square root of d over beta square, which has a, a number. Why people did not understand this analysis? Because they say, oh, when beta goes to infinity, this is going to zero. But they do not understand that this asymptotic analysis precisely tells you what is the order of magnitude of M in terms of beta. It is of order one the magnitude of one over beta when considering square root of d t over t b, and this the dimensional analysis can cannot tell you that, and and, and this is a key analysis uh, uh, for the laminar flame speed. <coughs> Summary: A flame is a quasi isobaric reaction diffusion wave. Uh, there is no pressure effect. And for one step first order reaction, uh, 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 the, the expression of the uh, flame speed, this is a burn on the burn side, UB, is this at this form. 
for uh, and the reaction rate is of this type and the activation energy beta is defined here. So this is the result of zeldovich frankaminski in the asymptotic limit of beta large, of large activation energy. So uh, uh, now, because DTB is uh, the, diffu the thermal diffusivity is the square root of the sound speed times the collision, uh, the elastic, the time between collision. When you put this expression in uh, DTB, in this expression of rho B, you find immediately that the ratio is clearly subsonic because you have not only one over beta here, but you have the square root of this exponential. And this uh, confirm that uh, you were right to consider that the pressure effect are negligible and that you are dealing with a reaction diffusion way without pressure effect. And that the, the flame is uh, typical because the flame is markedly subsonic. <clears throat> now, let me finish the, this, uh, uh, this last lecture of the day by a few considerations of a more general problem, uh, which is the reaction diffusion, considering reaction diffusion waves. <clears throat> reaction diffusion waves was a problem uh, which was uh, 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 solved at the same epoch uh, by Kolmogorov. And it is very interesting that Kolmogorov solved this problem, which is like a, a flame problem. In fact, he did. It's when you have reduced, when you have get rid of the unusual coefficients. It's, it's the same type of problem that I just present to, to you uh, for, for the flame. And uh, considering the, it is the diffusion equation, uh, which is fed by a, re, a nonlinear reaction rate. And, and this rate, production rate of species of theta is uh, is uh, 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 when it is in steady state, theta equal one, which is, uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's propagation of a steady state in another steady state for which the production rate is zero. And, and uh, 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 but these steady state are quite different. Uh, one is an equilibrium state, state and the other is a non-equilibrium state. Uh, I will not enter into the details of this uh, uh, delicate analysis. It's a purely mathematical analysis. Uh, this is called usually in the literature the Fisher equation because it, this equation was introduced uh, to, to study the propagation of uh, um, uh, a, a, a population of uh, some species in, in, uh, 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 in one dimensional. You know, you have a diffusion equation fed by a nonlinear production term. <clears throat> if you start, so you have two steady state, one, the one, one theta equal one, and the other equal zero. And uh, the theta equal one is a steady state uh, at equilibrium, and theta equal zero is a non-steady state. Is excuse me, is a steady state in a non of in a non-steady uh, 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 stable uh, solution. You know, unsteady stable is when d over theta over theta is positive, and a steady a stable state is considered. Uh, when, do, 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 when the, the derivative of the reaction rate is negative. So now, if you start uh, 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 with uh, a t equal zero with a, uh, a profile of temperature, what does happen is that 
uh, you propagate in both in both sides. Uh, you contamine the the equilibrium state propagates into the uh, uh, un, the stable state propagates into the unstable state by two wings that propagate. And the question is, what is the speed of this wing? Uh, I, I will not enter into the detail. The result is the following. Let me, let, I skip the detail. You, you may go back if you are really interested in that. You may go back uh, to my slides or to my book where uh, the problem is uh, studied in detail. The, the, the result, I go directly to the result that can be obtained from the mathematical Yes. Okay. So the result is the following: that uh, uh, if you look for the propagation speed of the two wing uh, on propagating on the left and on the other on the right, if you look from mathematical point of view of uh, what what are the sp the speed of the steady state problem. Uh, associated with the propagation of the wing, you find from mathematical point of view that this, the spectrum is infinite, infinite mean that you have a continuous set of, of uh, uh, propagation speed that satisfies this equation and that this, this for the steady state and that this, this has a minimum. And it turns out that this minimum, when the nonlinear is not strong, let's say when you have a nonlinear term which is like theta times one minus theta, which is a quadratic term, in fact, in this it turns out that the minimum is square root of the uh, uh, of this uh, <coughs> of the d of the derivative of the theta in the uh, unstable state. This is for, and and it turns out that the lower bound is is in fact the velocity which is reached by the two wings, uh, uh, propagated on left and right, that I have shown to you at the beginning. But this is quite different from the solution of Zaldovich. This has nothing to do in Zaldovich. This uh, the derivative of the, the, the reaction rate on the cold side is zero. So this is not, it turns out, uh, so this is what I am explaining is this minimum, this can be shown mathematically is this minimum. And it turns out uh, uh, that and this can be explained simply. It turns out that if you have now, if you replace now, if you in increase the stiffness, for example, you see this is a soft nonlinear term. This is a stiff nonlinear term uh, as in conversion. So there is a transition in the minimum here, uh, which we have, we have found that with my good friend Amable Vignan we have found what is a transition in the two uh, kind and these two problems. And, 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 and this transition, and when the, when the nonlinear term become too, too, uh, too, too hard, like in conversion, it is a Zelovic solution. Uh, professor, we cannot see the slides. No, it's okay. There is no okay. more slides. <laughs> this, yeah, okay, last, this is the yeah, last slide. Our time is up, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last slide of my lecture. Yeah. I just it's just one or I can be I can uh, put the slide again. Excuse me. Uh, I will put the slide again. Oh, there it is. Why oh, I cannot? Okay, put the slide again. All right, here are the slide. Okay, stop here. Okay. So you know what is uh, you, you know. Look at this 
equation at the red nonlinear. Okay, this is a, this is a soft this is a soft nonlinear term. You go from one to zero by a quadratic term. This is a very stiff nonlinear term, which uh, as described by the theory of frame, which as a frame uh, speed is square root of the rate of the integral of the uh, reaction rate, while in the uh, uh, Kolmogorov solution, which is valid for soft uh, uh, reaction rate, this the minimum frame, uh, the, the speed, the frame is related to this term, which is zero in the Zelovich analysis. And what we have uh, done with uh, Linian in uh, 84, my good friend Linian, we have found the critical number here, beta, which separate the two solutions. And, uh, it's, uh, and this is close to beta, close to three or four. I don't remember exactly, but you have the detail of this in my book. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the last, <laughs> is the end of uh, my lecture, today lecture. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Do you have question? Some from the students? So I have one question here from uh, Salim. So is quasi-isobaric assumption uh, appropriate when you consider frame propagation in a closed volume? Ah, uh, no. Uh, excellent question. If the volume is closed, uh, uh, the, the, the pressure increased uh, okay, in a homogeneous way. That is, the pressure is uniform, but increase in time. Okay, and, uh, and this is an, uh, really an, ex an excellent question. That you see, the, the f concerning the propagation of the frame, uh, uh, what is important is that the pressure is the same on the fresh mixture and on the burn side. But when the frame propagates in the closed tube, the overall pressure increases because of the heat release. And in such a way that the frame propagation theory is still valid, but the pressure increase with the time. It turns out uh, that the pressure effect in the propagation is, is, is only through the thermal effect. That's all. This problem has been solved by Zeldovich, and it is, uh, if I remember well, it is completely treated uh, in the book uh, uh, for, the, for a planar frame uh, propagating in a closed tube. The problem is solved, uh, by Zel was solved by Zeldovich uh, in his book. Uh, it's a more recent book of theory of conversion with, uh, you know, with three or four. I can uh, just wait a minute. I will find the book here. Uh, do I have the book here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I am pretty sure, but I have to check that that the 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 problem is fully solved in the okay here it is all right in the Zeldovich book uh, the mathematical theory for combustion and explosion by Zeldovich Barenbach Librovich MacVildaz and this book is uh, is uh, is was printed in the eighty five okay. Uh, I did not present a solution in my book, but if the student is interested, I should have some note that I have written my, because I redo the calculation by myself. If he did not find the, 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 I am not sure that it is in this book, but I am pretty sure it is. And if the student is interested in, I may provide him I, I may found in some in my files a calculation, a calculation that I did by myself 
uh, to recover the result of uh, the knowledge. So uh, say to the student that if he is interested in this problem of a planar flame propagating in a closed tube, uh, uh, what is the solution I, I can provide in uh, the, the analysis, okay? Okay, Professor. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have Thank a, you this wonderful lecture? Do you have other question? Um, and uh, nothing uh, right now. Uh, Salim says uh, thank you for the explanation, and he will be grateful if you can give the. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, so so so. Uh, so you do not have other questions? Uh, not anything right now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's time for me to go. Yeah. To <laughs> it is, it is uh, close to noon. <laughs> to be night, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.